Hello, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, Actify Physiotherapy and Wellness with Dr. Marcia Pareto. The Society is in the process of programming a fair amount of movement webinars and videos for our community. One of the most important things that those with hypermobility need to keep in mind as more and more of us get placed under a shelter-in-place order or are self-quarantining is that we're not letting our bodies decondition. It is very easy with the way life is right now to let our bodies decondition over the next few weeks. So hopefully by providing these movement-based programming, we're able to help our community stay strong during these unsure times. That being said, my name is Sarah Jo Ritchie, and I'm the volunteer coordinator here at the ehlers Danlo Society, and I'm also your moderator today. So this is how today's webinar is going to work. Webinar attendees will be muted at all times during the webinar. However, you are able to type any questions you may have throughout the presentation into the question box at any time. Marsha will not be able to see or respond to any of these questions until the question and answer portion at the end of their presentation. Please do not send your questions more than once. It will not increase your chances of having your question answered. It will only make it harder to sift through the questions and to make sure we can get to as many as possible. Now, since this is a movement-based webinar, the authors and the ehlers Danlo Society request that you carefully follow all instructions given. It is your responsibility to ensure that you are capable of doing these exercises. If you have any doubt about your level of ability to undertake any of the exercises or advice offered today, you should not do or follow these exercises or advice. And if possible, seek, um, seek advice from a health professional. Please participate at your own risk. The authors and the ehlers Danlo Society accept no liability for personal injury related to participation in this webinar. Now, Dr. Marcia Pareto is a certified orthopedic manual therapist that specializes in treating patients with genetic collagen disorders and has a very special passion for those with hypermobile EDS. Her goal is to help people work around their difficulties. As someone who has hypermobile EDS herself, she knows firsthand the pain of hypermobile joints, frequent injuries and subluxations, and the challenge of full rehabilitation. She founded Actify Physiotherapy and Wellness, where she works to bring patients with hypermobile EDS back to a life free from pain. She is part of UHealth, University of Miami Human Genetics Research Team, along with Dr. Ermin Forgani and her team, where she studies hypermobile EDS and hypermo hypermobility spectrum disorders. Married and with one daughter, when she's not working, she enjoys time with her family and staying active and fit to maintain her joint stability and keep her body strong. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, hello everyone. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and speak to you guys about this uh, such um, complex uh, diagnosis and much more complex to rehab, but yet this is us. I am part of you. I am a zebra just like all of you. We are all zebras and we want to be zebras, smart zebras. So that's my goal, educate and help everyone. Um, so let's talk a little bit about me because we can't start without you guys knowing really who I am, right? So my education, I graduated back in 1995 from a renowned university in South Brazil. Uh, in 1998, I came to the United States with the intent of acquiring my, uh, my doctorate degree in physical therapy. And I, uh, in 2009, I finished my doctorate degree with Nova Southeastern University. Also in 2009, I pursued a certification in orthopedic manual therapy with the Ola Greensby Institute in California. And in 2010, I went further uh, knowing that uh, nutrition uh, and wellness is a big part of making us uh, uh, healthy. I pursued a one-year education with the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. Um, a little more about me, as she already said, uh, I uh, have a special passion for heritable disorders of connective tissue, uh, mainly by, uh, for the hypermobile and the inner dental syndromes. My background is in pain sciences and neuroscience. I am big in neuroscience. I believe that our brains are such a powerful tool. And if we only learn to use them better and to its full potential, we can make magic happen. Um, I was part of the Project ACHO study group a few times with the Baltimore Hub. 
Um, as she already mentioned, I am part of the University of Miami Health and Human Genetics for research, uh, specifically with Ehlers-Danlos syndromes and hypermobile, uh, hypermobility spectrum disorders. Uh, I am the owner and the founder at Actify Physiotherapy, and my clinic specializes in the management of hypermobility spectrum disorders and Ehlers-Danlos syndromes. Uh, that's my passion. That's where I put my heart in. Uh, my story. My first experience with joint hypermobility started early in life. I used to pass out in a school and uh, I was told that I was making it up. How cool is that? Well, I thought it was okay then. No, they said I was making it up. I believed. Um, shorter after I started having my thumbs and my ankles dislocating or popping out of place. And uh, it was a really fun and creepy way to get everyone, uh, everyone's attention in the school for sure. I got sent to the principal's office a few times for that. They told that was not nice. Uh, fast forward a few years, uh, generalized fatigue, multiple severe upper airway infections, my year round seasonal allergies. So my seasons last from January to December and repeat back to back. Um, headaches, heart palpitations, passing out, dizziness, mental fog, and all the things that we know well as well were there. Uh, I became a semi-professional figure skater, uh, which took me twice, if not three times, the effort that took everyone else to learn the same maneuver. And my recovery was so slow. It was so difficult to get back on track. Four or five hours of training a day were just taking the best out of me until eventually I gave up. Um, that's me with two great friends. Back in 2012, I was on crutches and wheelchair, uh, failed hip surgery, joint subluxating, um, loss of strength, muscle tone, and all that nine yard. That's me trying something uh, on the ice. Um, <laughs> did not work well. That was after my, my uh, hip injuries already. Um, in 2003, that was my, my key point. Childbirth was my trigger. Um, I had all sorts of complications. I developed um, uh, blank. Mental fog is one of the things. Look at that. I, I show in this live. Look at that. Um, I had preeclampsia. I have a tonic uterus. I bled half of my blood volume. Um, I had all sorts of complications that uh, there are on the books. In 2009, after my first hip surgery, which that's the first hip surgery picture, there is, uh, they, I heard that there was something wrong with me. My joints were not supposed to move that way. And that was the piece of information my surgeon gave me. With that information, a failed hip surgery, two more surgeries in 2012, I start pasting thing to get things together. And I came to realize that I did have a hypermobility disorder and I pursued my diagnosis. Building strength, learning where my body is in place, improving my cardiovascular endurance, managing my chronic pain. Uh, I joke that my chronic pain has chronic pain. That's why it was so difficult to rehab. Um, I went from being on crutches in a wheelchair in 2012 to being today a cyclist, a yoga practitioner, and exercising at least 45 minutes a day. Uh, within all the norms and care that you're gonna learn soon, okay? So what is the Actify method? The Actify method is, is a protocol for joint hypermobility uh, and that was developed based on my own experience as a patient and combined with a lot of research and extensive study on the topic. This method was developed with focus on neuromuscular re-education for patients with subacute and long-term muscular disorders, including chronic pain and chronic functional limitations. Rather than focusing on one painful area, I learned that we need to focus on a whole patient. It's a whole person. It's not a body part. It's not a popping knee. It's not a dislocating shoulders. Pain and injuries come from muscle imbalances, from misalignments, from joint instability, from soft tissue trigger points, from hypersensitive nerves that start firing 
because of all the other things going on. And this can affect the entire body and not just the one body part. So if your elbow is subluxating or hurting or dislocating, rest assured there is something else going on in the chain that relates to that elbow. And we need to know how to rehab it for the EDS sake, for the elbow sake, and for learning and helping others in the future. So from, from the first session, really my, my goal is to release muscle restrictions and restore natural movement. It can be as simple as looking at a one sequence of muscle chain. Uh, it doesn't need to be a whole body in one session, uh, but the impact is immediate for you. And it does last, it does carry well from visit to visit. We might take three steps forward and one backwards or three forward and two backwards, but we always are a step ahead with this approach. We work together with you to provide you with a multi-layered treatment and we take the time to get to know you and ensure that the treatment will evolve as you improve. If you keep repeating the same exercises on a daily basis, you are going to hit a plateau, you are going, your body's gonna get used to it, you are not gonna make further progress. You might not fall backwards where you were, but you are not gonna get where you wanna be. And when the joint stability is no longer in limitation, then we're gonna focus on optimizing your body's function uh, with the same high level of attention, with the same personalization, because we need to carry all this to our daily basis. It's beautiful if we can perform a certain exercise with the most beautiful control and with the amount of repetitions that we want to see. But if that doesn't carry on to your day to day, that will make any difference to your life, to my life or to anyone's life. So what are our goals here at Actify? We want to optimize your neuromuscular control. It's the unconscious strain response of a muscle to a signal regarding to the dynamic joint stability. We need that. It's not all about strength. It's about neuromuscular control. It has to do with the nervous system. We want to eliminate, yay, if we can, or reduce your pain. Do I know cases where we have eliminated pain? Yes, I do. And I also know cases where we have reduced significantly the pain. It doesn't mean it's everyone's case. So we are not going to make promise. We're not going, our goal is not to reduce or eliminate pain. That's a goal bonus. Our goal is to make you better in stability and strength in understanding your symptoms. The pain is going to come. The relief is going to come as you improve. We are gonna uh, restore your normal range of motion, teach you how to find your neutral joint position. We've, if you are exercising with a locked joint, you're not exercising correctly. It's important that we guide you and show you where your neutral point is so you can use your muscles in an effective way. We also to, uh, want to educate you on how to manage your condition. I know we all think we do manage the condition really well, but I want to manage proactively. Managing a condition doesn't mean that you're just accepting the status quo. Is you a step ahead or two steps ahead of the status quo. Flare-ups are approaching. We take action. We don't wait until they hit. Injuries are possible. Well, what can I do to prevent? This is going, this is, going to lead to a dislocation. How do I fix that before it happens? And if it does happen, how to approach the dislocations and subluxations that may come aboard? But first things first, I'm big in knowledge. I believe knowledge is power. When you have knowledge, you respond to a situation. You don't react to a situation. Reacting does not always lead us to a good place. So let's learn a few concepts which the Actified Method is based upon. Hypermobile people have decreased proprioception. We all know, okay, yesterday I actually went to answer my phone and I hit my eye with the phone. I mean, the proximity of the eye with the ear is well known. Uh, it's close, but to hit the phone on the eye, answering a phone for at least plus or 40 plus years, I should know where my ear is by now. I hit my eye. 
okay? And this is not one of the, I'm pretty sure you all do that. I do that all the time, I hit things. Uh, I have been doing a lot better, uh, but when I have a flare, the corners at my stairwell know exactly where my shoulder is every time. So what is proprioception? It's the relationship, be be oh, relationship between your body's central nervous system and the certain soft tissues like your muscles, your tendons, your ligaments. There are tons of little organs that regulate movement. And the proprioceptors can sense when the tissues are overstretched or stretched or, or experience tension and pressure and send these orders upstairs to the black box so the black box can send back a stimulation and make the corrections. That's why we can turn around the table without hitting a table, or at least most of us can when we are not on a flare. Uh, as you can see on the picture, we have tons of little collagen fibrils running lengthwise within the, the Golgi organ capsule, which is one of the organs that are extremely important for muscle firing and, 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 and tissue um, uh, stretching sensation, okay? So we have Golgi tendon organs, we have muscle spindles, we have tiny, teeny things in there that make a ton of a difference that we approach with our treatment. And it is, in general, it is stimulated by exercise, but in our case needs to be the right type. So what is proprioception again? Well, it's allowing the body to perform several actions without stopping to think about each one separately, such as walking while having ice cream and without missing your mouth. I, it, I took years to be able to drink water and walk at the same time. And if I am overexerted, if I am tired, I have to stop, drink water and continue walking. That's, that's how proprioception works. You will miss body parts. You won't be able to touch your nose with your eyes closed if you're off. Um, that depends on the type of and what body part has the most issue, obviously. So it's a necessary for safety, precise, precise and fluid movements. In, it is essential to all humans and also animals actually do need proprioception to function. Um, so let's talk about ground reaction force. Another thing that plays a huge role for us in rehab. It's the force that acts on the body as a result of the body resting on the ground or on a surface. It could happen from the feet, it could happen from the hands touching to something, pressing on something. If you're on all fours, if you're pressing on a table, if you're having your elbows on a table, there is always a force back at the same intensity. So if someone stands on the floor, the person is exerting a force, which is their weight on the floor. But the floor also exerts the same and equal opposite force back onto us. So that keeps us standing, okay? If there was no pressure from the floor, for example, uh, matching our pressure, our body weight, our body would sink into the floor, okay? Thankfully, we do have ground force reaction. We, it would be like standing on moving sand, literally. Um, so due to the loss of proprioception to the lower limbs, and that again happens to all limbs, but we're talking about lower limbs specifically here, it will be more difficult to walk or stand upright, which will require a greater muscle work and effort. And guess what? Increases fatigue. So we're fighting this on a daily basis. And now we have one more thing because of the proprioception issue. We now fatigue even further because of the, um, the ground force reaction, the ground reaction force and its relationship to proprioception. Kinetic chain is another big thing, okay? It's a combination of consecutively arranged joints as in a chain. We can see on the picture to the left side how they interconnect all the parts, cervical, thoracic, SI joints, hips, knees, foot and ankle, they're all connected. So now when we look at the picture on the right side, we can see that the body will do whatever it takes to keep your head level, your eyes level, okay? Because that's how we see the world. So if your neck's crooked this way, your body is going to start crooking everything else until my head is level. And that's how we end up having more and more issues because we are never balanced. 
No one in life, in the universe, is ever balanced. We, are always, we all have a little weakness here and there, more to one side than to the other. But for us, that imbalance leads to more weakness, to less proprioception, to more misalignment. And that just keeps, it just keeps tracking uh, and making us in making challenging um, movements more challenging for all of us. So there are three types of movements or three types of categories within the connective, uh, the kinetic chain. Uh, and I say three in quotation marks, so two are official. One is more of what we talk about, but it does not really exist in the literature officially, but we talk a lot about this. So we have open kinetic chain, closed, and then pseudo-closed kinetic chain. What is the importance of this for us? Joints and segments influence one another during movement. When one is in motion, it creates a chain of events uh, that affects all the neighboring joints, which will affect the, their neighboring joints, which will affect their neighboring joints. And here we are, the whole body is involved in uh, one uh, one event, okay? So open kinetic chain examples, it's pretty much your distal structures moving and through your proximal structures. So as we can see, uh, someone doing a bicep curl, a chest press, arm raises, or even the big guy there doing hamstring curls. Those are all open kinetic chain. They have its place. It's a fantastic way to build isolated muscle strength, uh, but at the sacrifice of increased load to the joints. That's what we don't want. We don't want things flying on space, at least not when we don't have the stability. That's when closed kinetic chain comes into play. It's now backwards. Everything that's proximal will actually be moving um, around, I mean, I'm sorry, everything that's proximal will be moving around the distal joint. So now your feet are on the floor and you're squatting. Instead, you are seated and you're doing a leg kick. You with me? So that, that's the difference with closed chain. There is always a surface of contact to the distal extremity. It's the best way to stimulate co-contraction, which is um, your ability, the ability of your muscles to stabilize your joint during movement. And because multiple muscles are working together to create that movement, it decreases the load. So now, if we compare a wall push-up to a bicep curl, the wall push-up is gonna be less demanding on your elbow joint than a bicep curl. You guys with me on that? All right, so what is the importance of it? The biggest importance is creating less shearing forces. What are shearing forces? Are forces that push one part of the body in one direction and another in, in the other direction. So open chain will create that, closed chain will not create that, so it's less stress to our joints. So um, with uh, le uh, less shearing forces, we will be able to control the joint better. So a good example down here is we're talking about long lever and short lever arm. Uh, this is just, it's pure physics. But if you look at the arrow on the lady that's doing a plank on her toes, the force is, the point of force is the one pressing down on her hips, the arrow down on her hips. So that pretty much is telling us that there is more shearing forces, right? On the hip through the pelvis. If we shorter the lever and we have them do a plank on the knees, doesn't mean it's your exercise, okay? This is an example that we all know well what they are, but doesn't mean your program will have a plank, okay? Uh, when you're kneeling and doing the same, you will have less forces going through your hip so the hip is actually acting your stability point right there. If we don't have the stability in the hip, I don't. I don't do planks on my toes. Even though I am an extremely fit person for my condition, um, I am not able to do a plank that way because of my hip instability, all right? So I just want you to guys to think of that. If you're doing something that's far out of your body and it's hurting the shoulder, Think about bringing it in. 
think about making it smaller, not smaller in range only, but smaller in how far this is from your body, okay? Now let's talk about pseudo-closed kinetic chain. This is like my favorite thing in the world. Um, it gives the proprioceptive stimulation to your body parts to control movements. And we, I use that with, by adding bands, blocks, cable balls, or rings, uh, anything that can contact and touch your body. Why? Because any type of contact to the skin, muscle groups, or joints provide feedback to the nervous system, improving muscle activation and muscle control. What is that? Proprioception. We're back to our proprioception. You see why we talked about proprioception before. We're going to talk a ton of proprioception here. Okay? Uh, so talking a little more about the pseudokinetic chain, as an example, uh, this is not an example of pseudokinetic chain, but I want you guys to understand the example of the proprioceptive input, okay? As, um, so you we all have seen athletes with kinesio taping uh, to the thighs, to the knees, to the shoulders. Well, research has shown that KT doesn't really improve stability in any way. The tape itself does not include any, does not uh, add any stability to our joints. But the tape tugging on the skin, being there, touching the skin, seems to improve proprioception, which also helps in decreasing pain and activating muscle through proprioceptive input, right? Now, you might raise your hand and say, wait a second, I cannot do taping. Yes, it's true. Some people cannot do taping. Some of us are very, very sensitive to anything that sticks to our body. There are compression garments specific to specific joint parts, or I use a lot, and a lot of my patients use it. Uh, there's special um, sports pants that have kinesio taping patterns that are amazing to guide movement, to help you with your venous return. Uh, we talk about all this on the evaluations. We're going to talk about this again further forward. So, but just to say on the pseudokinetic chain, um, studies have shown that the use of a loop around the knee, and doesn't mean again that's your exercise, but this is an example. Um, around the, uh, so if you put a band around the knees, we increase your muscle activity with consistency. That works much better for untrained participants, for untrained people like us. Uh, trained athletes, advanced athletes might not feel that benefit because they might be beyond uh, uh, the strength necess uh, necessary and the feedback necessary um, provided by that band, okay? Uh, so in that case specifically, we're activating more of your glutes, um, gluteus medius and gluteus maximus, which are essential for pelvic stability, okay? So proprioception and breathing. Yes, we're going to talk about breathing. We all tend to hold our breaths. Why? Because Holding your breaths increases stability. We like bear weight. Now all of a sudden we have more force because our spines need to be stable to generate extremity motion, okay? Once our spine is stable either by strength or by bearing weight and holding your breath, we generate a little better of emotion until we fatigue and we fail because we are doing something we shouldn't, obviously. So proprioception, again, refers to being aware of your body's movement in space, but that awareness can also be used for movement inside the body, breathing. So becoming aware of where things live within you, how they move and what they feel like takes practice. That's why breathing is part of the exercises and not an exercise by itself, okay? So we start by teaching you how to breathe because we all get here on a fight and flight mode. 80% um, roughly of my caseload comes in with the ribs all the way sitting up with digestive issues, obviously we all do. And of course, that's not the only cause I'm gonna say here, uh, but the diaphragm being up can, be, can cause problems with digestion, can cause problems with, bloating. So it's not the only cause, okay, but it could contribute to your symptoms, okay. So um, studies have shown that before and during exercises, mindful breathing along with intermittent touch of your hands to the chest, 
to the ribs, to the belly, and even to the neck to see if these muscles are not working because they these are your accessory muscles for breathing. So if a diaphragm is up here, not doing its job, this is gonna start kicking in. Then the neck starts hurting, right? Then the shoulder starts getting tight and then all of a sudden we have this funky posture that we cannot get out of it. I've been there, okay? So I'm not saying anything I have not experienced. Um, so anyway, um, so light touch um, to guide where the air should go assists with your training, with training your body, how to use the breathing as a tool to assist your muscle activation and your movement awareness, all right? Which we need so much. Again, a little more about breathing, that's big, okay? Studies do suggest that individuals with chronic joint instability appear to have altered diaphragmatic contractility, contraction, which may be an illustration of diaphragmatic dysfunction and the central nervous system changes in individuals with joint instability. Voila, we just connect to the brain, to the breathing, to the joint instability, okay? So breathing and proprioceptive training are essential to start, all right? Now the Octify method, is it's the way that I found to be most effective to address joint instability and chronic pain. Um, so what are the elements that I like to work with? And again, I am always evolving. I am always changing. I research and research. Uh, I am a, a, a chronic student per se. And this, this subject is dear to my heart. As I said to you guys, I also have a daughter that has Ehlers Danlos Syndrome and that has a, a lot of joint instability and has all the other systemic things. So I, I studied this so much for my sake, for her sake, and for the sake of all of us. Um, so what are the elements I look at? I will evaluate all the systems of your body, and I will evaluate all the seven basic functional movements, all right? So what are, what are all those seven uh, movement patterns? It's just the body is made up of several complex systems that work together as a one unit. It's like a well created in, you know, uh, dented wheels connected. And if one wheel is not doing well, could be your digestion, could be your um, uh, pain perception, could be your dislocations. If one wheel doesn't work well, every other wheel will suffer. That's how we need to treat the whole body, okay? So while exercise, one should focus on movement patterns rather than isolated muscle groups to build functional total body strength, power, and stamina. It's well shown exercise increases the release of growth hormones, increases the, the release of anti-inflammatory substances in your body, decreases stress hormones, um, increases the well-being increases our mood by releasing um, metabolic substances that will help us heal and will help us walk towards that progress. So there are seven basic movement patterns. And that the, again, doesn't mean that I'm gonna have you squat that low as the picture shows or even lunge. There are other things that I can lo uh, look and there are other ways that lunges are incorporated in real life. So if you tell me I never squat in my life, I don't squat because of my knees, I'm pretty sure you sit down and get up from a chair. That's a squat. You tell me, oh, I don't lunge. Oh, I'm pretty sure you do lunge when you put one foot in front of the other to reach for something. That's a form of lunge. Push, pull, bend. I'm pretty sure you drop things on the floor. I, I drop things all the time. I have a, a lousy hand, okay? Um, yeah, some of you may say, well, I don't bend. I, uh, well, we bend too good, right? But some people prefer not to bend because of the back, the knee, or the hips. You say, I don't bend. I sit down in a chair and I reach. Well, that you're telling me you can't bend. That's one of the seven movement patterns we need to correct on you, okay? Twisting motions. We do reach in diagonals. You don't need to do a yoga twist. And walking, we all do, all right? 
somehow, even if you're wheelchair bound, you're still gonna get up from your chair and walk a certain small distance to something. All right, I have had patients coming in on wheelchairs and I have, I have cried and I still get my eyes tearful when I remember, and I mean that, when I see them walking into my office one day without the wheelchair. That's amazing. Okay, a minute for composure. All right, back to it. Um, personalized treatment is the key. Not two people are alike. So I make your program to the dot only for you. And then the maintenance program follow up because your follow up, your maintenance program is different from the person B, C, D, and E. Okay. Um, so let's look at the evaluation a little bit. I will take a detailed history. I mean, for, for the, the ones that are online, and any of my patients online here, can you guys raise your hand so I got to see? I want to know if anyone is online here. Hey, guys. Hi. Hi. Wow. wow. Woohoo. I <laughs> love you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so you guys know that I send you a huge intake. You guys might like think I'm nuts when you get my paperwork but I ask about the nervous system, the immune system, the digestive system, the cardiovascular system, the respiratory endocrine, reproductive, excretory. We even talk about, we even talk about the sexual act. We need to talk about it. It's part of our lives. We need to talk. We talk about everything in here, okay? We help you, we, I learn from you what are your limitations because it's not just about going to the grocery store. It's not just about being able to do an exercise. It's about living your life to the fullest possible with the condition we have, okay? So we do a detailed history taking for all the systems. Uh, we, I, I wanna understand your flare ups, your triggers. I, I wanna understand you as a person, not you as a diagnosis. I don't care what your doctors have told you before. I care what you are telling me. Your story matters to me because I make your program personal to you, perfect as much as possible to you. Physical examination of all joints. I poke, I pull, I stretch, I bend, I straighten, and obviously with your limits, I know what I can do and I know how, much, how far I can go because I ask you how many spoons do you have today? Because I wanna know, do you have any spoons for me today? How intense should we work today? How, and I teach you how intense you should work on your daily basis. Because you need to know one day is not the same as the other, so the program does not work for daily basis sometimes, okay? We need to learn, and you are in charge because you're not gonna depend on me for the rest of your life. I wanna educate you. So I only come to the scene and step up to help you when you truly need me, not because I made you dependent on me. I want you to be, um, I want you to be certain of the things you're doing because I taught you. Well, I wanna be your teacher. I wanna walk the walk with you, okay? so. How many spoons do you have? And I do get a few coming in sometimes. I got a couple of forks, but there are no spoons left today. And I don't know what to do with those days sometimes, but we find a way each person has a door that I can open. And I find a door and we work with the forks and we make those forks the spoons, okay? So I use the standardized test procedures that will screen the body for inappropriate movement patterns, painful movements and muscle imbalances. I call those neuromuscular dysfunctions weak links. Those weak links are the keys that we need to address first. Doesn't matter if your knee hurts more. I will give you one example. I had one person that came in and, and this is not uncommon, but this one person, had a severe shoulder, right shoulder pain to the shoulder blade that no one could fix. She didn't know she was hypermobile. As a matter of fact, we identified that when we ran the 2017 criteria, we sent her for testing. She came back positive for hypermobile and Lerdelo syndrome, which for her was mind blowing. Um, so she was would come in with, she came in after seeing 
two or three different therapists to treat her shoulder. As I exam, I, we worked a couple visits. It wasn't a magic thing. I did not just come up with that like I am a magician. I am not. Took me a couple visits, but I was able to find that her main issue wasn't the right shoulder. Her main issue was the weak left bun muscle, the left glute muscle. So as she was walking, she was so weak on that left side that the shoulder connection on the myofascial pattern on that uh, remember the kinetic chain that I said? On that chain, the shoulder was overworking to compensate for the booty weakness on the left. So that's what we look for, the weak links. They will guide me to which exercises I am going to give you. And each patient is going to be different. Uh, also for the level of difficulty, uh, I also, I, I, create this whole thing around your need. And then that's why general exercises are not indicated uh, for hypermobility uh, patients as all other coexisting diagnoses must be considered during the evaluation and on daily basis. So again, um, we have so much going on with us. And one day is the POTS, the other day is the MCAS, and the other day is the digestive. And the, I mean, it's always something. I mean, the day that you feel good, I know if you guys are the same way, and raise your hand if you are, the day you feel really good, you're afraid of moving, right? You're like, oh my God, I don't know if I should move, uh, maybe a light breath, because I'm afraid to start feeling this whole thing over again, right? So... Yes, um, we, we, um, I look at everything and every symptom you can come in presenting with, okay? So the, activity, uh, the, the Actify treatment method will focus on correcting these weak links by the stimulation of the neuromuscular control and the proprioceptive system in a very individualized way to regain more functionality less pain during your day-to-day -day life. So the little red, red link there, you see it's open, it's broken, okay? It's a weak link, we can disconnect at any moment, okay? The whole work, and this is a, a, a visual only, but the whole idea is to make the link whole again so everything else in the chain becomes more efficient, all right? And it's not a magic. It sounds beautiful on paper, but on the day-to-day -day activity, it takes a lot of conversation in between us, okay? So the treatment approach has five elements, mainly closed kinetic chain, um, which is uh, through, uh, the exercise neuromuscular retraining. I'm going to use bands, blocks, suspension training, exercise rings. We're going to use a small control movements. We're going to add challenge to the movements being performed as you improve. We, uh, the idea is to uh, also, um, I also like actually to use controlled instability, vibrations, touches, uh, challenges through little taps on the equipment we're working with to provide you with the challenges and with the input to the black box to give you the proprioception down to the area we are working. So just doing and holding something does not make you uh, that efficient, okay? Uh, so we, I, I like, for that, I like suspension training, uh, ropes, vibration platforms, foam pads, squishy balls, things like that. Um, the big machine that you see on top, it's called Neurac Red Cord. okay? I have this in my office. It's an amazing machine. It's an amazing tool. I can detonify your body. I can decrease uh, dystonia symptoms. If you walk in and you suffer of dystonia, I put you in that and the change is amazing after 20 minutes uh, and, and incredibly amazing after the treatment hour. Uh, and this is so gentle, you're literally suspended in the air and you're doing nothing other than breathing and receiving the vibration through the cords as I work through with your body, amazing. Um, I use multi-range isometric holds as well because holding a position in different parts of the range of motion 
while ex uh, exercising, being with slings, bands, or, man or manually uh, to increase muscle activation will assist in the firing of the muscles accordingly. So you will let the muscles know, oh, wait a second. Oh, 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 I think I got this. Have you guys been everywhere uh, in an exercise where you say someone tells you do this and you're like, uh, 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 not sure sure how I create this movement. And then you start exploring and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I got this. That's exactly what it is, okay? But why do we need to make it multi-range and not just isometric? Because if you stay just on the position, for example, that one of the ladies are, and that's all they do, let's say, they don't do anything else, just that one range, you know what's gonna happen? You only get stronger, 10 degrees into each direction of the movement. So that means that the lady with the pushing the, the knees into the hands and doing isometric, if she only did that way, she will only get stronger on 10 degrees with the, the knees going towards the body and 10 degrees with the knees going away from the body. And that's it. It does not translate to functionality if you don't throw it in multi-range in a multi-range system, and if you do not add all the other components. So uh, also isometric exercise have been shown to have an analgesic effect of the central nervous system. So just contracting your muscles correctly with the right range, with the right, and we, we work with this and we find your specific need for that. We need to understand each person, which direction of the movement is the one that will give you pain relief uh, to help you decrease uh, the symptoms at that moment. It also will increase core muscle strength and recruitment and will stimulate cock contraction. If we rewind a little bit and cock contraction is the ability of your body, of the muscles to stabilize your joint to movement. So all muscles contract together and keep things where they should be without subluxating or to the best of what we can keep you from subluxating, depending on each case again. It will minimize joint uh, strength. It will increase tendon load tolerance, which improves the muscle tolerance to load. What does that mean in English? All right. It makes your tendons stronger. So your tendons will help your muscles to tolerate the loads that we're adding to you better. That's over time. That's all about going down into the smallest cell being placed lined up with other cells to make it stronger. It's an extra layer, if you want to say it, or a better quality cell in the replacement of cells uh, as we, our body changes in different rates, right? Uh, but roughly at about seven years or so, we do have a whole new body. So I hope we can create a better one. And I can actually, I can vouch for that because um, from 2012 to now, we have had eight years. And I have to tell you guys that my breaking point was about seven-ish years, progressively getting better. But I know it's a long time, but hey, then what is the long time when we have the rest of our lives, right? So I, I have to say that I notice a significant jump as the tissues were changing. So we work with the workload. Workload is essential, okay? We precisely grade the exercises. We increase gradually the resistance and the number of repetitions. We go from slow speed performance to first activate the muscles for improved muscle activation uh, to um, for improved muscle activation on faster speeds. Okay, but we don't go there if that's not your case. Each person is different. I have had wheelchair bound patients, and I have a athletes, pro athletes with hypermobile, they're hypermobile and it, they're different people. I can't apply to the wheelchair bound person what the athlete's doing and vice versa, okay? We also do a graded exposure to exercise because it has shown to be way more effective for patients with chronic pain or nervous system hypersensitivity. So we want to take down the pain that's coming. The pain is coming here. Pain is output. Pain comes out of the brain to the body. Something happens to the body and goes to the brain. And the brain says, oh, I got to hurt. 
got to get your hand out of there. Your position is wrong. So it's from the brain out, not from the, 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 the area to the brain. And that goes a lot into neuroscience. We're not going to cover this today. I'm going to have another lecture that will talk about it. But just so you know, sometimes the brain gets hypersensitive to the stimulus. So we anticipate that something we do will hurt, the brain will send out the painful stimuli because it is conditioned to do that way, okay? Uh, we are not making up that, okay? So don't understand that way. I'm saying that's the brain and it's how it works. It's a protective mechanism, okay? So, um, the other thing I want to tell you too is about short and long lever arms. We touched that a bit, a little bit, but I just want to revise that because this is a such important concept uh, because it helps. Uh, short lever arm helps us to conserve energy and decreases forces going. And I cover part of my 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 sentence there with the picture, but decreases forces going to the joints um, and through the joint that acts as the stability point and minimizes the injuries and chances of the subluxations and the dislocations. So we want to work short liver. You see the little guy on top? It's a short liver. You see the little guy on the bottom? It's a long liver. So you want to stay closer to everything you do for the sake of joint protection, to protect mainly your shoulders as the picture is showing there, okay? So it's a pain-free approach. Okay, and we all should be thankful that we feel pain. Before you jump at me from the screen, okay, we all feel pain. We should be happy because we have a brain. If we didn't have a brain, we wouldn't feel pain. Okay, so no brain, no pain. Uh, we need to change the, 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 the stimulation that goes up to the brain. We'll talk about it in a second. Uh, we prefer no pain as we're working, and every patient of mine can vouch for that. I will request you to not feel pain as you're working. And we will make changes and changes and changes until that performance is pain-free, okay? Or if you're really in a lot of pain and it's like, you know, there's nothing I can do, it's hurts all the time, well, let's not make your pain worse. And let's see if then through that we can make it better eventually through the sessions. The goal is a pain-free performance in the near future, okay? Pain is the brain signal that something is going on, which is not always a bad thing, except that because there is always things going on in our bodies, right? It's tough to live in pain. I, I know eight or nine out of 10 pain for several years of my life, never telling anyone, never told people I am struggling. People will say, how are you doing? And I would say, I'm good. How are you? because it's just not worth to revise the story again. It's pain, it's gonna be there. I can say that I am pain free. It's been uh, about six, seven months, I have been completely pain free. Once in a while, a little something here and there, but completely under control, do what I have to do, fix it, but no more pain on a daily basis. Um, the Actify method also focuses on proprioception. We spoke about it a lot already, right? The core and the science behind the Actify method is kinesthesia, which is the ability to sense joint position, movement, direction, speed, and force. We need to train all this, okay? Um, and then we work with the big mechanoreceptor stimulations. Mechanoreceptors, they're little terminal nerves, the little structures that live, like for example, in the sack of your joints that tells you what they, what's going on, the living muscles, they live in other places in your body, like the stimulate the muscle spindles, the Golgi tendon organs we saw in those other pictures, they become inhibited. So, um, which is your safety valve to prevent muscle injury, all right? You want them to be inhibited. And, uh, these receptors are in the skin, in the joints, in the ligaments, they're everywhere. So we need to focus on the stimulation, the proper stimulation to that. And there's a lot more to perception. There is our vestibular system, our vision. We're not gonna go into those, but just know that there is more to it, okay? And the mindset and brain retraining. How many times were we told, just think positive? Don't you feel like 
killing someone that tells you just think positive if it was just that easy the truth and the reality is that if thinking positive would solve the world's problems we would not have a pandemia nowadays right i have thought all positive that i can think of for this pandemia and this virus is still going because that's not what it takes now when it comes to us we need to change our mindset we need to retrain our brains all right in order to heal we need to get beyond ourselves but we need to acknowledge i'm not telling you pretend that this is not happening a knowledge accept but okay am i going to focus on all the symptoms i have or i'm going to put all the little energy i have in how i'm going to get better okay but smart work being busy doesn't mean achieving anything so we want to do it right and that's what i help you here okay uh, we need to get beyond our limitations we we need to become aware of our unconscious programs and old patterns so it's one of those things uh, uh, the definition of insanity right Ex uh, do the same thing and expect different results we have a routine we are used to do a certain way and anything that will take us out of the comfort zone on the human body the brain just loves familiarity it's called the law of familiarity we prefer to stay with what's familiar because being out there in the world is dangerous and that's what your body thinks what your brain thinks doing all these things is dangerous you never did that don't do that oh this is gonna hurt don't do that okay so uncountable studies in neuroscience have shown that once we get beyond ourselves, we can begin to know the unknown and actually heal ourselves, for example. And you're gonna say, okay, all right, that's it. I'm disconnecting. You're going way far, lady. All right, it's actually true. In a different presentation in the future, I can, I can share those things with you, but I have seen cases and cases of connective tissue disorders to actually have change it and heal i'm not saying you're healed your genes are still there right but significantly improved to the point where symptoms are minimal to none okay and this is the studies does not me saying it's proper study with a good uh, uh, a good um number of participants and a good control okay our brain doesn't know the difference in between our thought and what is a, which is a created emotion and the actual experience in your life. So if you can internalize the emotion and start focusing on the good things and start feeling the emotion of going through, oh my God, I'm doing this exercise. I know I'm going to get better. This, I just feel it in here. That's when things start changing. Remember when I told you guys my um my delivery was what set off all my symptoms so our genes they can be turned on and turned off this is a whole other presentation but this is just a little thing here they can be turned on and turned off so something turned on my gene during my delivery the stress of my delivery the complications the pain the, the whole thing it turned on my gene there is a way to turn it off too. It still exists. It's called genetic expression. We're not going into it. It's not my field of expertise. My field of expertise is what I'm talking to you guys and the neurosciences, okay? But yes, know that that is possible, okay? Protocol treatment, rehabilitation progression. Each phase of the rehabilitation training is a specific goals. It has a specific goals to be met. The program is progressive, will include, it includes addressing from a straight plane, just a one direction movement, to multi-plane movements at when time comes. We use from isometric contractions in multi-ranges to concentric and eccentric contractions, meaning concentric, you're making the muscle shorter, eccentric, you are making the muscle longer. There are control, there is one, two muscles or several muscles working at once for these things to happen okay uh, we start with slow and low movements and very controlled and we progress to faster movements larger ranges uh, multi-directional um, 
from non-resisted to resisted exercises, but always with the con uh, closed kinetic chain or the pseudo closed kinetic chain in mind, because we want to stimulate your pr proprioception. If we don't stimulate proprioception, we're not going to achieve the results we're looking for. We might lose, choose not to use any limb movement, any arm or leg movement, but then we add those movements as you improve and we are always connecting and closing the chain through something. And we go from lying down to standing, passing through kneeling, passing through all fours, passing through seated. Uh, the program has to be functional, otherwise it has no value to you on your daily activities. So here is what we can, uh, a few examples. And this is, we're almost done. We're like five minutes from the end now. You guys can ask me any questions then. Um, it's a progressive program. It will address from straight plane to multi-plane as we spoke about. We go from isometrics to concentric eccentric. We start from low and slow and we progress to faster. Our goal here is increase the strength, proprioception and joint instability while retraining your breathing, while you're breathing correctly because it doesn't matter if you do everything beautifully. Your diaphragm is sitting up here on your chest and you're using your neck to breathe now because you don't have the, you're straining. That, that cannot happen. I will stop you right there when that happens, as a matter of fact. Um, so this is an example uh, of the bend knee opening. She starts with both knees bent. She will use one knee out, at, out against the bend. She's engaged, her abdominals are engaged. She's breathing correctly, her upper body is relaxed. An example, and the reason why I put it here, because I want to show you guys how it's progressed. Uh, for some patients, I might need the progression to go to a seated, uh, uh, on the floor position with the bands right there. We can progress to a seated on a chair, depending on the case. We can progress to a standing position, and there's other changes I can still make. These are just a few. This is just one example of bend knee opening. Um, from there, we can also use holds. We can also use multi-range holds. So she will bring it out a little hold, bring it out a little hold, bring it out a, a little hold. She can do pulses at the end range. She can do inner pulses. She can do mid range. She can do full motion. So there's so many things to be done here. So many ways to approach to strengthen in different uh, formats. Another example, shoulder blades protraction and retraction. Um, the initial and most basic one is the one with the green band, all right? So she is just holding her band straight up. You can see her body is aligned, her heels are aligned, her knees, her abdominal muscles are engaged, her transverse abdominal muscle is hiring beautifully. Um, she's actually our model for the pictures here. Um, you guys are going to know more about this in a second. Um, but she will then, and, and she does have ex, a huge elbow uh, hyperextension, and she was able to control that because she got to that level of control. And then she will do retraction and protraction of the shoulder blades, lifting it off the mat. Then we can progress that to different ways. Uh, we can have a knee plank doing that same exercise. If that's difficult, we can put you against a wall or a table to do that. We can do another way if a person cannot even load the wrists, we can go ahead and have them against the wall, just like the guy on the bottom is doing there with the band around the wrists, uh, the guy in the black shirt, okay? And then we can um, also be standing or sitting and do the, the protraction retraction as the lady with the red top standing up. Another example, and I think it's my last example here of what I work with you guys here, is an isometric dead bug. So again, we can use our first example, which is our model. Um, she, will, she, she couldn't hold her knees off the chair. This is the basic now. She's obviously able to do it now. But when she started, she wasn't able to hold her knees in a dead bug position. Uh, so what we did is we started with a chair and that's why I have a chair on that ex example. So she will do an isometric contraction just for activation. It's all about hip and abdominal stabilization, rib cage control, shoulder and arm strengthening, 
proprioceptive training of the diaphragm as well with progressions to cervical stabilization, strength, back, shoulder, and scapular stabilization based on all the other exercise we are using. So now you can see the guy doing it with the elbows with the uh, orange roller that brings it to a different level of activation. The other guy with a big uh, gray ball, that's a different level of activation. And there we can do everything, all four members pushing into the balls, one and the other to cause the diagonals to activate. And we transition that, and then we can have, you see the guy on the back and the bottom with the yellow band. That's another way to closing the chain, closing the chain, all right? That's what makes our joints to stay in the sockets. And then finally, in a more advanced performance, we see the lady in green uh, doing uh, an activation of her buns and uh, her posterior chain on all fours now. So those are the variations for one exercise. So in sum, the Actify method, it is a well-rounded method that addresses the body as a whole. It's not perfected, I'm perfecting it every day. Uh, perfection does not exist. We all know that. Each day I learn something new and if it is valid, I will start applying it. I do not apply anything to my patients until I try that myself. Okay. Uh, and I do have a little small control group of patients that are my, they, they are, they are interested, they were interested and they want to be the testing group. So we test with them those exercises to see, and then eventually we add those to the program, to the protocol. Uh, we take into consideration all your comorbidities and coexisting diagnosis when preparing the program. So I'm not going to give you an exercise that you cannot do because your pot symptoms don't let you do it. We control your heart rate during the sessions and I teach you how. We control the dizziness, we control the blood pressure, we control everything that is necessary for your case, not to everyone, to you specifically. We look in and take consideration, uh, we take diet and food sensitivity into consideration. Why? Because something you eat will affect your performance. Something you eat might make you more sluggish, sleepy, tired okay so we go we look over we we look at what's happening to you when you eat um we discuss diet a lot here okay because we heal from inside out not from outside in already um we use principles of functional medicine and biology which is a biology based approach that focuses on identifying and addressing the root cause of the disease yeah we know it's soft tissue it's this it's that but we can make it better with proper supplementation, with proper supporting uh, clothing, with proper exercises, with everything that's necessary, again, for your case. Each symptom or differential diagnosis may be one, many contributing to a diff individual's illness. One of the many contributing. Uh, we incorporate the open-mindedness of integrative medicine when the term that most effective modality need to get the patient well. And we train the body and the brain to achieve long-lasting effective results. All right. Now, what I was going to talk to you guys. So we are, me, Dr. Irma Fergani from University of Miami and Dr. Marlon Pereira, uh, also from University of Miami, uh, are in a, in a combined effort. We're putting together what we hope to be the first step, but an amazing book to help you guys to understand everything I'm talking about. You will not, not by far replace your therapist. It will not by far replace medical um, advice, but we want to give you some research-based information from everything we have been putting together to help the inler downloads, the hypermobile inler downloads community, and the inler downloads patients in general, um, and all the hypermobility spectrum disorders. We, we just want to give to you guys a, a little more, okay? Um, so this is it. I mean, I am up to any questions you may have. You guys can contact me. Here's my full info. You can text me on that number. Uh, we reply to you almost 
uh, immediately. Uh, I always say that there are only two reasons why I won't respond back to you. I am sleeping or I am dead. Since I don't do that very often, I don't think I ever did yet, um, I will not answer because I'm sleeping, <laughs> okay? Uh, but I always make the point to at least answer you, say, hey, give me an hour, give me to the end of the day, I will elaborate this to you. But I will let you, I will give you an answer. Uh, I will, we will get back to you, all right? So I'm all yours, any questions? Alrighty, thank you so much, Marsha. Uh, that was an absolutely fantastic and extremely helpful webinar. Um, we've you. got a lot of questions and we're <laughs> definitely not going to be able to hit them all, uh, but we will try to get a, a fair gauge of all of them. Uh, would you be up for sticking around for maybe 10 minutes of questions? I can stick around for as long as you, as you want me. I, I'm here for you for okay. as long as you need me. Oh, and by the way, if we, I want to just say to you guys, if we don't address your question here, for some reason, you guys can literally copy your question, paste your question on the body of the email to Actify or in a text message to the 561-366-2435, and I will answer them to you offline, okay? All right. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for doing that. Of course. Um, so our first question is, I've been doing daily exercise for over four and a half years, limbering daily mm -hmm. vigorous cardio exercises. I have consulted a variety of practitioners, but none have found the right positioning to lessen daily severe spasms in my neck and entire shoulder. I've had spinal surgery, um, but maintained good mobility. Um, pain arrives quite suddenly, takes a long time to quiet. Are there any suggestions um, when it comes to closed chain kinetic activities that might lessen the pain in real time when the spasm arises. Um, thank you for your help. Okay, so that's uh, Susan, right? Correct. That asked me. Okay, so Susan, here it is. Um, it, it's really difficult to tell, to give you that answer without putting my hands on you. I'm big and touching uh, and I need to feel those muscles. But I would attempt, and this is an attempt, and that's a very gentle attempt. Have you tried, I don't know which position, it will be your position as well, because we would explore this in a visit. But have you tried the isometric contractions into the different range? Can you guys see me? You guys can see me or not? Can you see my face? Yes. Um, yes. Okay, I just want to make sure because I'm showing something. I'm like, am I, am I showing something at all? <laughs> so you can try the different stimulations on the isometrics, okay, and see if that will lessen your program. The point is spasms to your cervical uh, spine will, are telling me that you have a cervical spine instability. The muscles, the, the brain will tell the muscles, Tighten for dear life, so her neck stays on top of the body. So we need to address the core problem, which is your cervical instability, okay? A, uh, fixing just the spasm is putting a Band-Aid you know, in, in a dirty wound, okay? The instability being the dirty wound. So we need to look at what's happening to the levels that were not fused in your spine and correct the stability there. I hope I can help with that answer. If not, shoot me more texts and ask him way more okay next Alrighty, thank you so much so um a common question we always see is how do you know if your doctor or physiotherapist is the right fit for you it's that that's um a very easy one are they listening to you and are they responding to your questions problems with a, an approach, with, the, with an open approach that takes into consideration what your input, your input into what I do to you is important. It needs to, you tell me what I should do. Not telling me in terms of exercise, but listening to you is what makes me know what to do with you. So if your if you're, um, doctor or physical therapist is listening to you, if they're applying the things, trying to correct your problem. And you gotta remember, not everyone understands ZDS. So they might have the best heart trying to help you as much as they can, but they might just not understand the EDS and the hypermobility to the point to help you. 
So you need to then appreciate everything they have done for you, but you need to move on. I'm not the right therapist for everyone. Okay, and no one is the right person, the right clinician to everyone. So we need to continue searching to the person that's going to listen to your concerns, validate your concerns, and let you be part of your rehabilitation program. All right. All righty. Thank you so much. Um, mm -hmm. Another common question I'm seeing throughout the question and answer box is from people that aren't necessarily in your area. We've got a couple people from the UK. Um, mm -hmm. They're wondering, since they're not in your area, is there a way to participate online or to find a PT in their area that is familiar with this program? So um, we do offer uh, teleconsultations and it's been quite successful with the, this moment in time actually. Um, it, it might seem, well, you're not touching my body, you know, but I can see you and I can read so much into your movements through telehealth. If you can, I, I would rather you would be able to come to me and see me, but if you can't, we can do it online and we can talk. It's a one hour, one-on-one -on -one consultation. Uh, it's very involved and I will do anything in my power to deliver everything that you need. So yes, I can help you in person and over the internet as well. Alrighty, thank you so much. Um, do you have any exercises that are really good for unstable knees? Yes, there are a couple exercises for unstable knees uh, that we use here in the office that have shown to um, deliver a really good uh, result. But again, we're talking about the knee being unstable, but what is happening above in the kinetic chain? What is happening below in the kinetic chain? And then when is that instability is happening when the knee, the foot is in contact to the floor or when the foot's not in contact to the floor? We look, I have to look at everything. I will be happy to answer this question to you, but I need a lot more information before I can tell you which exercise is the right one for you. But yes, there are ways. All righty, thank you so much. Um, another frequent question that popped up is referring back to the clothing you spoke about as mm -hmm. an option other than the kinesio tape. Do you have a, a brand or a type yes. that you prefer, that yes. you recommend? I, I, I myself have two of them. Uh, the brand that I love uh, that has shown to be the most effective, and I'm pretty sure there are a lot of people online here that are my patients that own them as well. Um, they're from CW-X. So just Google CW-X compression pants. Um, there is a type that I prefer. And when you go on their website, there will be the pictures of the pants, but there will be, um, if you look through the pictures, once you click on a type of pants, any type of them, one of the pictures when you scroll through the pictures is going to be the, the human body with the muscles showing and then they blacken the area where the taping pattern on the pants will be acting. I want you to choose the one that has the abdominal, the back, the hips, it comes to the back of the thigh, the front of the knee, tapes the knee and then it goes down to the calf and don't buy the shorts, don't buy the the the, the Capri by the lung. We need the stimulation to come from the knee, from the heat, from the ankles up. If you have questions again, just email me. Say, hey, can you send me the right picture uh, for the pants? I have no problem in going online and sending you the right link. And do shop around. Sometimes they're a lot cheaper on Amazon. Okay. Oh, and by the way, I'm sorry. One more thing. They do have shirts too, but the shirts I prefer the shoulder. A control shirt from Tommy Copper and not from the CWX. Tommy Copper has a, an amazing uh, postural and shoulder stability uh, shirt. Okay. Um, Alrighty, done. thank you so much. Um, how do you feel about bracing and when is it appropriate to brace? Okay, so th there is a lot of controversy still on bracing, okay? But in general, bracing is important and necessary when you have a joint instability. But if you consistently brace, you are taking away the, the ability of your body 
to stimulate the stability on that body part. So I'm not saying go to the grocery store without your brace. I'm saying take your brace off, exercise without it until the point you can. And when you see that the joint's getting a little stressed, you put it back on and continue. I also say um, take your brace intermittently off when you're walking around the house, but pay attention. We need the proprioception. We need the mind. That's the mind-body connection. When you are walking without your brace, focus on firing the correct muscles. That's the only thing that's hard to explain specifically uh, over like this, uh, because I would have to see how you walk, but I would teach you how to walk properly and stimulate the right muscles while walking, because everybody's going to walk. The body's going to figure out a way to make you walk. But the thing is, it might not be using the right muscles. So yes, intermittently use it at home, but focus on how you're walking without overextending the joint. At the mo even if it's two steps, you put it on, rest, take it off, take two, three steps without. When you see the joint can no longer hold, put it back on, wait 10 minutes, back off, two, three steps, back on. Repetition is how we make it happen, okay? Alrighty, thank you so much. Um, I was happy to hear you use the word dystonia. Um, I don't hear it often in the hypermobile EDS presentations or papers. I have a stiffness in my muscle that takes over my body and twists it in different directions. It is difficult for me to exercise because of this and the misalignment and muscle imbalance that causes injuries. I can't seem to move forward. Can you talk a little bit how you can help with dystonia? All right. So dystonia is like amazing. Uh, I actually see more dystonia patients that originally physicians thought it was possible on, on EDS patients. Um, and it's been, it, it's been great to be able to help people with dystonia. Uh, some of them have made uh, progress just by strengthening uh, progressively and slowly and using obviously ways of controlling that strengthening uh, without um, exacerbating the dystonia symptoms. But others, uh, we had, I, I have a physician I work close and I work closely with physicians. I am annoying to them because I get them on speed dial and text messages. So I bombard their, te their text messages about patients when I need them. And I have a physician that I work closely with, which is the physician that does the dystonia patients for me. We have had uh, patients that have been put in specific drugs. I'm, I, I, I don't know if I should mention any drug names here. I'm afraid I will be coercing you guys to go after a specific thing that might not be the right thing for you. But we can talk it privately then. If you have a specific question on medications, you can get in touch with me. I can put you in touch with this physician. But uh, there are medications that some patients have to be put in to control. I had one patient, the dystonia was so severe uh, that her shoulder literally was out of the socket for six weeks and no one know what to do. Um, it, it, when I talk about dystonia in another lecture, I will probably present if I have, I think I have the release from the family to show what her shoulder was doing. Uh, with the medication, it was 24 hours. I was able to reduce her shoulder in place and she is now able to reach to, and they told me she would never be able to move her arm without surgery. She has been on the medication, we control her dystonia, and she's now able to reach to 90 degrees without dislocating her shoulder. So I think this is a, a big thing we need to, to address dystonia. Patients, they only feel stiff. They don't have more than stiffness. That is a form of dystonia, and we need to look into it and refer accordingly. Alrighty, thank you so much. We have time for one more before we have to free up this channel. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a couple people interested in, they're, they're not feeling like they're being taken care of by their doctor or their therapist. What is the best course of action to start finding a PT that fits them? Is there a website? Can they go somewhere to you know, match with a PT? Or do you have any suggestions personally? So um, I, the biggest thing is to talk to a therapist if they have experience with hypermobility. The problem with the system is that the way the insurances uh, give us access to um, 
uh, uh, to having a certain number of therapists and uh, I mean therapy sessions and we need to make sometimes miracle to make things happen really fast and that is not going to happen it's not because your therapist is no good it's because they're so strained by the system um, a heart to heart with a therapist is a big one. Uh, that's why when everyone calls my office, we first have, we chat with you guys for like 30 minutes. We wanna know if we are right for you and if you are right for us. It needs to be a partnership. So you need to talk to your therapist and say, hey, I'm looking for a partner in crime. I'm not looking for a the therapist. Can you, are you up to help me find the solutions? to make me better. I work with therapists all over the country because I have patients that leave away and they cannot keep coming here to see me. And uh, we do um, a lot of telehealth visits and things like that. But then I meet with their therapists over the phone and we go over and how uh, that progress is happening and all the questions they have. So I even work at distance with therapists as well, but it's the person that's willing to be your partner in crime and help you find solutions. Not the person that's going to push the drug you ask or the person that's going to just give you the exercise that you want because you want. It's someone that's willing to walk the walk with you. Alrighty, thank you so much for that advice, but that is all the time we have for, for today. All right, um, so can, can I say one quick thing? Because I know absolutely. that's it. We, I know we have questions. I, I can see uh, someone is asking about, more about pseudo closed chain. I'm, I'm hearing someone here asking about uh, uh, rib pain, someone that asked about multiple sclerosis. Guys, email me or text me right now or anytime later today. I will answer every single question I couldn't get to. And even more if you remember. So please, I wanna answer your question. I did have patients uh, with multiple sclerosis and AGDS. I wanna answer that to you. I wanna talk to you about rib cage pain and all that. So email me, text me or whatever is good for you. Okay guys? Hello? Oh, I was man. wondering where did you go? I'm like, am I done? <laughs> Ooh, there is no way to get tech cardio going better than having your internet drop mid-webinar. I know, it's okay. Well, <laughs> well, at least we know you were alive now. We got a really crazy tachycardia going on. <laughs> very, very much so. Hopefully I'll survive this, but... <laughs> it's uh, all right. Sorry about that, guys. Zoom has been very interesting now that we've all been, you know, locked down and all schools have transferred over to teach on Zoom and, you know, everybody is doing, you know, work from home. So internet and Zoom has been questionable, but, you know, we're doing our best. Yep. Um, so true. So true. So, well, um, let's wrap this up. Um, like Marcia said, she has given her information. Um, so please write that down. It is very kind of her to allow us to reach out to her with everything. So thank you so much for doing that. No, um, my pleasure. My pleasure. I'm also, here to help and serve before anything. Oh, our community appreciates that. Thank you so much. Um, my pleasure. Another place to go for information is our website. Um, yes. It's got a lot of resources, a lot of information. We also have our helpline that's available. You can call or email them. Um, they are very responsive. They are on top of everything. Um, and definitely consider signing up for our newsletter if you haven't already. It's a fantastic source for the most up-to-date information and upcoming events, including our upcoming webinars. Now, speaking of upcoming webinars, our next webinar that we have scheduled for now is going to be on April 29th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, and that's titled How to Have Effective Doctor Appointments, Tips and Preparation, and Tips for Preparation and for In the Doctor's Office with our very own Shaney Weber. You can look out for the sign up on our website and our various social media platforms. Again, thank you so much, Marsha. Um, this is My definitely pleasure. uncharted territory that we're all trying to work through together. Um, so thank you for jumping in to support our community how you have. Um, my, my pleasure. I, it's, it's a pleasure to be able to serve. And thank you for having me. Thank you guys for listening. And, uh, you know, I'm here for you all. Thank you so much. It's, it's really appreciated. I would say it's, it's more appreciated than you know, but as a patient, you, you know from both perspectives how appreciated having healthcare professionals that really get it, 
mean to us. Um, True. So um, as a few questions in the question box said, yes, um, this webinar has been recorded and barring technological difficulties, um, it goes through post-production and will be eventually housed on our YouTube channel and our website within about a week or so. Um, so if you found this helpful, um, go on our YouTube channel once it's posted, hit that like button, subscribe so you're alerted to when we are uploading our newest videos. Um, and another thing to point out on our YouTube channel is we have posted our week one videos for both Jeannie DeBond's Movement Workshop and Rowan Pierce's Movement Program for Kids. So check those out as well. They're a great way to keep active and moving while we're all stuck at home. Um, and I hope, Marsha, I hope that you and then everyone that joined us today has a wonderful rest of your day and that everybody stays as safe and as healthy as possible. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Have a great day, everybody.